guys, it's Maria. In this video, I have something new and cute for you. But before we start, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And I also have something brought to you by them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for everyone that wants to learn or improve in a certain field. It offers a huge collection of classes, so there are a lot of things for everybody. Sculpting with polymer clay, drawing, design, DIYs, photography, filming and many more. I myself am self-taught too. I never studied art, sculpting or any of these things and I am still learning by myself. I had to buy tons of books in order just to learn the basics. I am glad that Skillshare has all of that and more and it is affordable. The annual subscription is less than $10 a month. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their field, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work you love. For example, I am also signed up to Gabrielle Bricky's portrait drawing classes. I can point you to one of her classes of sketching realistic eyes with pencils. It can help you out if you're starting with dough repaints or if you want to improve. They gave me a link which you can find below in the description that gives the first 500 people to sign up 2 months free trial of Skillshare. I love miniature dollhouses and watching the cute DIYs of the square to spare made me always want to try out. So I got two DIY dollhouses from Robotime and in this video I will build Lisa's tailor and of course repaint and customize it because we love customizing. I started with the parts for the base, wall and ceiling. Before I painted them I used the provided sandpaper to smooth out the edges from the production cutting. I made sure to undust them before painting. First I painted them with a brush just to achieve a lighter color. And then I used my airbrush to get a better coverage. Originally they are supposed to be painted in cream color, which is the paint that I previously used, but I wanted them in white for the look I'm going for. To make the outside of the walls look like real, I used a sponge brush to paint over and create texture. I glued the walls together and made sure that it is under a perfect 90 degree angle, so there won't be a problem when connecting them to the base of the house. I also painted the window pieces in white and the windowsill needs a bit of a force to be placed. I wanted the windows to be able to be opened and I used the smallest size drill bit that I have and wire to modify them. I attached the foil and I also made tiny handles to look more realistic. And then I glued them on. With the correct pieces, I build the support for the floor. The small piece is where the battery box will be. And these are the parts needed to put together the lamp. Originally the lampshade is brown, but I made my own to fit to the style I'm creating. I 
I exposed a bit of the wires and then I connected them to the LED. To isolate them, I used a bit of shrink tube. The small metal piece is used as a support for the light shade. To check if the lamp works, I added the batteries to test it. And it works! After this, I assembled the ceiling. I used the same metal piece to attach the lamp to the ceiling. And then I fixed the wires. Before gluing it on, I made custom curtains. This way it is easier to add the wall decorations. I used to-do lace and crystals to make them. To match with the rest, I also glued crystals where the curtain rail will be and I used aluminium wire for it. Next, I made the photo and glued the wallpapers. I used my ruler to make sure that they aren't crooked. I also added tiny crystals to look like they're pinned to the wall. Next, I glued a small wooden piece for one of the wall hooks. They should look like this. Then I made two paper flowers, only one is used for the wall. The decorations are complete and I glued on the ceiling. To make it cuter, I made another curtain. The second wall hook looked unfinished and I also added one of the wooden pieces to it. I finished the light by connecting it to the battery box. Yellow with red, white with black, and again isolating them with shrink tube. The floor was slightly curved, and to fix that, I painted some of the wall wooden pieces that I didn't use and glued them as a baseboard. And it actually made it look realistic. And I glued the room borders. I also had to add a bit of glue to the floor because it still didn't lay completely flat. And here it is. Underneath, the box can be taken out to be able to change batteries. Just make sure that you don't place it completely inside because the floor can't be removed. You can glue an extra piece as a blocker. Next, I made the baskets by folding and gluing them. Paper rope is used on two of them to make braided baskets. I wanted this one more realistic, so I just glued the handles between the ropes. I customized this one with one of my fabrics and lace. The basis is also a lighter color crafting paper. To 
make the yarn skeins, I just glued sewing thread around the pearl beads. And did the same with the other colors. To make the rolls of fabric, I glued round columns to 45 by 100 mm fabric per piece. The fabric with the flower pattern is one of my favorite and I used it as a main piece in this project. Next I filled all four baskets with the skeins and fabrics. To make the fabrics for the cabinet, I pre-cut, folded and glued the pieces together. I made the pillows in a similar way, but here the pattern is only used for folding. I glued two sides and left one to be able to fill in with silk floss. I customized it by decorating with ribbon and crystals. I finished the other two pillows the same way. And these are the pieces for the fabric cabinet. I also customized it by airbrushing it in white. I applied only two paint coats because I liked how the texture was visible through the paint. First I glued the shelves to the base. It was easier to use the help of my ruler again to make sure that they're leveled correctly. Next I assembled the drawer. I glued it to the base and then I added the side pieces. I glued the top and it is ready. There is a calendar on the side of the cabinet and I made it by folding the printed days. To make the binder I used aluminum sheet. There is enough to make two in case something goes wrong. I glued the two calendar pieces together and secured them with glue to the binder. To add it to the cabinet, I glued a piece of the same paper that I used to make the lampshade. Next I added the fabrics and the pillow. For the rest of the furniture pieces, I went with white and bright ocean blue color. And I used the brush because I wanted them to have paint strokes. I assembled the shelf that holds some of the fabric rolls. I made the flower that will be on top a bit different. I glued the tree powder on a green sewing thread.
to make it cute I added crystals on both sides. Next I made the round stool that is for the working table. I also painted it in two colors. I used the flower fabric to make the cushion by gluing it to the pattern. I also assembled the chair. I painted it mostly in white. I used the same fabric to make the cushion since it is a main piece in this project. Next I made the ironing board. I glued three small pieces that act as a stopper for the legs. And I made the top piece the same way like the cushions. I also customized the cheval mirror. I removed the film on the mirror and glued it to the front piece. To make it pretty and to fit to the style of the room, I glued crystals. These are the pieces needed to make the head. I pre-glued the paper and used glue again to add the fabric. I cut the excess in a circle and folded the extra fabric inward. As an inlay, I used the second fabric. I glued the ribbon and added a bow tie. To finish the head, I added crystals and pearls. And here you can see I made the pillow to match to the head. I assembled the frame photo that will go on top of the fabric cabinet. Next I made the antique coffee grinder and these are all of the needed parts. I first glued the tiny pieces together and then the paper board. To make the handle, I bent the wire and then passed it through the half bead. And then I assembled all the pieces together. It is so cute that the handle can turn. Making the book is similar to the calendar. I folded the paper by following the lines. I 
I prepared the cover and glued it to the spine of the book. Next, I made the rest of the flowers. To customize this one, I used a different bead and the one that I was supposed to use, I glued paper roses in it. I painted and assembled the small cabinet starting with the drawers. I glued the bases and after that I added the drawers. I glued the sides and the top piece. Also a tiny newspaper on top. The next piece I assembled was the tool case for the working table. Then I made everything that has to go in it. I started with the sewing threads and then the rollers. I added a ribbon to the model stand. Here are all the pieces for the working table. I had it painted in white because I didn't want to use a table cover. And I also painted the leg support in cherry wood color. The sewing machine parts were too bright and I wanted them to look again like cherry wood. I aimed to create a lot of paint strokes that represent the wooden aging layers. It took a few coats to achieve a natural look. To finish the parts I applied a layer of glossy varnish and also to the black powder coated pieces to make them look as if they're metal. I assembled the machine starting with the desk part and drawers. When there was an excess of glue, I just removed it with a bit of paper towel. Then I glued the legs of the machine. The next step was the wheel mechanism. Placing the stepper was a bit tricky, but there is a spare connector piece in case it breaks. I wanted it to look more realistic and I used a sewing thread to make the machine's belt. I was lucky that the top piece wasn't completely dry so I could easily take it off and drill through the bottom where the belt will pass.
While waiting for the glue, I had some spare beads left and I used them for more detail. Next, I passed the thread through and glued the machine on top. Then I just fixed it with glue. To complete the circle, I glued the thread to the starting point. And to make it more detailed, I painted the machine in black. Then I added a piece of fabric and tiny sewing pins. I made the pins using wire and tiny pearls. And the dollhouse was ready to be furnished. And I want to thank to my patrons for helping me bring out content. It wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, share it with friends, it helps me a lot. Subscribe for more if you're new here and tap on the notification bell not to miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!